Hi, my name is Paul Siegel. I'm the CEO of Digital Double, a 2D and 3D graphics and digital art company. And I also founded Armature 9, a art mannequin doll for traditional artists. And I also helped found the Digital Art Festival, which took place over many years in Redmond, Washington. I've been noticing, you know, because I'm plugged into the art scene, um, in particular the digital art scene, quite a bit of distress surrounding AI and AI-generated art. And I wanted to share my thoughts on how I feel about AI art and the reaction that I'm witnessing among artists. Now, <clears throat> I'm an artist too, and AI came on my radar in August of this year. So it's just been a matter of months. And it had come on my radar earlier in the year, but the stuff I saw looked ridiculous and and uh, kind of funny what it would come up with. But the stuff I saw in August with Mid Journey specifically blew my mind. And, you know, the, the stuff that had come out earlier kind of looked like a program that was going through the web and taking images, cutting and pasting them together and trying to do what it could to blend things. But what programs like Mid Journey have done is they have actually figured out how to train a, uh, a piece of software uh, to understand um, the visual relationships associated with certain words and then generate, actually generate art from scratch. Uh, not too unlike how us artists uh, learned by uh, studying other artists and sometimes even copying them just so we could understand the visual language that that different artists were using in ways in which they were interpreting the human form color and light and things of that that nature so the the, the ai art that i'm talking about is the more sophisticated kind the kind that is actually generating content from scratch um, through this uh, deep learning database that they've managed to create and it's almost like magic when you when you try to use it and, and experience it it's a it's an amazing powerful tool and it hit me you know personally uh, to come in contact with this because here I was now 25 years into my career probably 35 years into just trying to become a better artist feeling like I was finally getting a handle on certain things with composition, light and color and anatomy. And here comes this tool that can generate stuff better than what I can better. Okay. So we'll talk about what that means in a minute. Um, and it was shocking for sure. I didn't think that this would happen so quickly. I mean, it almost feels Star Trek like, you know, uh, where you can kind of just talk to the computer and have it generate whatever you want. And that's where we're clearly headed, okay? Um, don't forget, as digital artists, I, I remember when, because uh, I started with uh, traditional media, and um, I remember doing art shows, uh, being invited, I, uh, submitting pieces, being invited to uh, show my work in galleries and at the time very few people were doing digital art um, and uh, I would go to these shows I'd submit my work like, oh well, beautiful piece please we'd like to invite you to be, be a part of our show and I'd, I'd print it out frame it bring it to the show and I'd go to like the opening night with all the other artists and they were all much older than me and I was like this young 20 year old kid uh, feeling totally out of place but excited to have my art up in the gallery and the first thing the artists uh, that were there showing asked me is like how did you make that 
and I said I made it in the in in Photoshop, and I'm like oh, okay, that was the kind of response I would get. They kind of just lift their noses at at the work I was doing, and it wasn't really considered art. Um, <clears throat> so don't forget that the tools that we have been using uh, as digital artists. Um, have given us such a leg up in our career to such an extent that it's proliferated um, the jobs that are available to artists. Uh, there are more jobs for artists today than there were uh, b before uh, computer-generated art came into the scene. And so the technology really helped us uh, create a career for ourselves which is something we should not forget and we should be grateful for. Now, all technologies uh, in all industries always uh, are working toward, I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you study history, all technologies are working toward uh, rendering the people doing that work obsolete. Uh, you know, just think about uh, a guy shoveling dirt. Uh, the, the tractor was invented and all of a sudden with one person you could <laughs> carve out a landscape that would have taken you like an army of a hundred uh, diggers going in there with shovels trying to do the same kind of work. So at every step of the way of human innovation we're always trying to figure out ways of doing things faster, more efficiently, requiring less people to do it. Every industry is doing this at all times. Um, uh, think about what the Uber technology has done for the taxi industry, right? Uh, every industry, although strangely, except for politicians, right? <laughs> and, uh, and lawyers, uh, I can't wait for AI to make its way into those fields. Uh, maybe the, the medical side, the insurance side, the uh, political side and maybe AI can go in and render some of those jobs obsolete might be a good next step for AI would be my my two cents <laughs> to this but let's not forget the context of all of this and um, the role we have played in bringing this about so there is a tough reality to this, which is that the technology is, to a large extent, going to empower uh, a lot of people who have not gone through the kind of rigor and training that you went through to themselves produce art. Uh, much like I can, you know, launch Ableton Live, throw in some beats, and I can become uh, an electronica musician, or even I can. I even have these libraries that sounds like I'm actually uh, uh, conducting an orchestra. The sound is so believable uh, that it feels like I'm, uh, I've got access to violin players, uh, cellos, I mean everything at my fingertips. And that's what technology has done, is it has brought the possibility of being creative to everyone uh, without needing to have any training just being able to hit a button and say, oh, I want violins. Okay, click violins and I can hit on the keyboard and generate violin music without ever having to learn how to play the violin. So the technology is at all times evolving at a place where everyone can do everything. That is, that is really ultimately what we're going toward is we're going to a place where everyone can do everything. Now, the odd thing about that is that if everybody can do everything, then what you are doing is not valuable monetarily, right? So um, just think about how you used to be able to call information. There was a person there ready to answer that phone call and being able to hook you up with the the, the, the group of people or the company or whoever it is that you need to get a hold of. But now you can just type it on Google and find it. 
So at all times, technology is working to render people as obsolete as possible. But the flip side is that, of that is that it is, it is empowering the everyday person even more. So now everybody is getting closer to being able to do everything and not needing anybody else. The downside of that is that it's atomizing us. It's making us so self-reliant that we don't need other people. So that's kind of the harsh reality of this. And this is, the, this is I think, the tough pill to swallow. This is something that we all need to learn how to accept. Um, what I would say to artists out there is don't think that somehow you're above this, right? Uh, all industries have been going through this throughout the past few hundred years or more, where humanity is constantly trying to figure out a way of doing something easier uh, so that we don't need as many people to do the same job. And so, um, now that's the, that's the dark side, I guess, of, of all of this. But on the bright side, it, it means that you now have a tool that will allow you to go above and beyond what you were doing before. And so if you have great aspirations, if you were learning how to do art and create art because you were trying to do something more than that, then this is a great day for you to be alive. But if you were just wanting to do art just because the art was the end goal, you just wanted to create the visual thing and put it out there, and that was it, that's all you wanted to do. The future, I think, for people who want to pursue art for the sake of art um, is probably going to grow in uh, the traditional side of things because now digital has become a lot less valuable all of a sudden. Uh, just think about the, the, the crypto side of art, the NFT, which was like a big thing for the past 24 months or so. But once AI came into the picture, it's like of what value is your, your digital NFT art when a computer can generate thousands of, do of those a second. Um, and, uh, also, and they're all gonna be unique, right? So what, what, is, the, what is the value at this point of, of your NFT? It's crazy how we go through these, the periods of innovation are now so short that we're rendering things obsolete just, tw just 12 months later. My entire career has felt this way, to be honest. Um, I've always been sort of on the cutting edge of technology, where technology meets art. And as soon as I'm getting a handle on something and feeling oh, I've got something cool to offer the world, comes this technology that makes it so that everybody can do the thing that I was doing and that I invested a ton of money and a ton of time in. It's just been, frankly, kind of a bummer, you know, kind of depressing uh, to be chasing relevance in a world that is ever striving to render me irrelevant. Not me personally, right? So we don't want to take the, it's the skill, the thing that, the thing that I want to offer the world, right? The thing that I want to do that hopefully will have some value so that I can make a living and I can also be providing a service and something that the world needs or can, can make use of. But at every corner, as soon as I, I get a handle on something, here comes this technology that just blows what I was doing out of the water by the push of a button. And so as artists who are in the field of technology, you should be aware of this already. This is the industry that we have all been uh, pushing forward. And yes, many jobs will be lost. And just like the uh, tractor analogy, uh, small teams will be able to do what giant teams could only do in the past. On the bright side, it means each artist that is out there now has a ability to manifest an enormous amount of creativity, uh, much more than they ever could in the past. And you can become almost like a studio in and of yourself. 
And what's really going to be valuable now is what ideas can you bring to the table? What new contributions can you bring to culture? You now have the power to not only deliver an asset, but to deliver a message. And I think our culture is in desperate need of more diversity when it comes to the, the messaging that uh, is uh, in our media, in our films, in our uh, comic books, in our whatever, whatever it is that's part of, in our news. I mean, you could, you can now use your creative muscle to put together you can create films now with with a phone. I mean, the, the quality of the can, you know, that's another example of, of, of where an industry has been completely rendered almost obsolete by a technology that is now in everybody's pocket. Um, but however, if you notice, it's not obsolete. There's always gonna be room for people who excel at a very, very, very high level. Right? So the film industry attracts the top-notch artists. Those artists will be fine. They'll be able to have a job in those industries. Just like in film, the very top, top, top-notch filmmakers and people who, who um, can, can afford uh, the big studios and the fancy cameras and the top-tier actors, that industry will, be, will continue to grow. Excellent. Uh, the industries that you're in will continue to grow at a level of excellence that is really available to a very small minority of people out there and so the real tragedy here is that there most artists i would say 99 percent of artists are not at that level and um, however now you have access to that quality level through your own uh, fingertips and so even though you may not be able to compete for a job uh, at that level, you can now produce media that competes with the media that they are producing. So there's a bittersweetness to this uh, situation we all find ourselves in as digital artists, which is that much of what we worked tirelessly over the course of decades to get better at is now being replaced by a program and it means that we need to start shifting our direction away from skill and toward creativity I think the quicker you can make that transition from focusing less on skill and more on creativity more on the manifestation of new and innovative ideas, messages, and stories, um, the more you're going to feel empowered by the AI. But if you're hung up on being the guy who's there hammering things and putting things together because you enjoy the skill, uh, the, the ability to practice that skill and your ability to craft things, um, the more painful this transition is gonna be. So my heart goes out to all the artists out there who are feeling a sense of anxiety uh, from all of this. Um, you have every right to feel that way, um, but you will have to let go and move on and try to figure out how to take this technology and use it as a source of empowerment. Um, I can understand there are some legitimate um, frustrations here with regards to uh, these AI programs learning from what other artists have published online and then the stealing essentially an aesthetic. Now we as artists have done that all the time, right? We've learned from other artists, we imitate other artists. And it gets mixed into our own voice a little bit. And so we each sort of produce something that is kind of like a genetic hybrid of the art that we've been mating with in our studies intellectually. Um, so we're, we're not that different. 
right, from what this program is doing in that regard. So I don't think that that is a fight that will ultimately uh, be won, um, unless, of course, the, the government gets involved. But I'm very anti-government, personally. I don't like uh, art. I don't like government meddling with things. And certainly, I don't want government's fingers and tentacles in the art world. Uh, you may come up with a noble reason for why government should meddle with an industry, but trust me, those tentacles will spread to places that you never thought it would, and it, and it will avoid the thing that you actually really wanted it to fix. So I suggest we view this situation within the context of history and understand that this is part of the human project. At least the humans that are involved in, you know, modern day civilization. Um, we are in a project that chases novelty and innovation at every turn because that is what sells. And that if that's a problem you want to change that is that is a much bigger problem to to work on and you can perhaps start to build a case for it with your creativity with your stories that you tell the books that you publish there are innovations being made in every industry that have rendered people obsolete and has empowered you so don't forget that don't forget in all the ways in which technology has empowered you, but yet you have forgotten how many people were disempowered in the process of that taking place. Don't forget that. Be grateful. This is the number one thing we need to remember. We need to remember to be grateful for all the things that we've inherited and that we have been given through technology. So don't go off thinking that technology is somehow your enemy. Technology has been helping you at every side of your career. Uh, even, I mean, how many of us made use of Amazon over the course of the pandemic to have things delivered to us? How many jobs did that replace? So we are all becoming increasingly empowered and that means that what an individual, the uniqueness of what we have to offer is becoming less valuable, true. If what you believe is unique about you is your skill. It's time to start thinking about what is really unique about you are your ideas, your perspective, your lived experience. That is what is truly, it's becoming more and more valuable. Now, sadly, we are living during a time when the platform and the stage, the size of the stage is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and permitting fewer voices to get up to the stage and broadcast their message. That's why for me, freedom of speech is primary and of utmost importance. And uh, I've been devoting you know, quite a bit of time advocating for that and um, uh, sacrificing a lot of social capital, <laughs> uh, standing up for, for freedom of speech and being called, you know, all sorts of names because of doing that. But freedom of speech is becoming increasingly important. And if there was a cause that you were looking for to fight for, that would be the one to fight for and use AI to fight it. Uh, use the technology that you have to empower you to be more creative than you ever were in the past so I hope that this uh, message uh, resonates my heart goes out to people who feel a sense of anxiety because of all this you have every, every right to um, you're experiencing a kind of death um, this is the kind of death that many industries have gone through it is not the end of your industry but it means that the access 
to that industry is just becoming more exclusive and available to a smaller and smaller group of individuals. That doesn't mean that you can't create your own industry now. You can actually compete now at a high level because you have the firepower of AI at your fingertips and it's only gonna get better from here. So I suggest to take a moment to reflect, to pause, and to think about what it is that you really want, what it is that you really want to do. What are the stories that you really want to tell? And maybe focus your energy on that. And also, if you're at a level where if you just push yourself a little more, you can get to a level of quality with your work that you would be able to get a job in the movie industry or in the game industry, then go for it. But I understand that for many artists, uh, we're operating at a level where we can't really get into those fields. You know, we just don't have the, the skill set. So you can either work toward that um, or you can use uh, the firepower of technology to help you get there as well. And uh, I think the stigma that I experienced early on in my career for being a digital artist um, when rubbing shoulders with other traditional artists is the same stigma that you're um, that, that people who use AI are gonna are experiencing now it, it'll fade over time and the thing that's gonna be valuable is your ability to plant seeds seed creation um, I mean that literally like recipes uh, that you can create to generate uh, works of art, uh, the, the phraseology, uh, the wording that leads to the creation of an image, uh, focusing on your own, uh, improving your own vocabulary, studying, learning about other artists, go into your art history books, dive deep into the past, into the roots. Uh, we've lost touch with our roots. And I think now is a time for us to really focus on getting back in touch with what it was that brought us here. We've been living lives that seem to be so divorced of the ground that we have lost touch. We have really lost touch. And I think the future belongs to those who are most in touch with their roots. The deeper the roots, the stronger the tree. Uh, and, and, and the more resilience it has for the uncertainties and the storms of life. So um, that's another thing that, that you can focus on is uh, go into the past a little bit and see what's there. There is so much beauty and so, so many places where that deserve our gratitude and yet we've failed to give thanks to, to the past. So I hope this is, uh, this is valuable. Um, I hope this brings you some comfort in a sense of, of perspective that perhaps uh, you didn't have until now. And uh, please share if you think it's gonna be helpful to others. Thanks for watching, bye.